y'all I've got more space to fill here so you see I got this empty bed back here and I've got this whole row here but on top of that I also have a garlic row that I'm gonna be officially pulling up probably later this week and I got more space to fill so I was thinking I was gonna do peanuts in this bed but then I was like, you know what, what am I going to do over here in this garlic row? And I was thinking, you know, maybe I could do corn, but corn doesn't do well in rows like this. It really does best when it's kind of bunched together. It gets better pollination that way. So Lily was like, well, why don't you put the corn in the bed? And I was like, okay, you know, that would be kind of perfect. They'd be all nice bunched up in this nice rectangle shape. And that kind of support each other and plenty of pollination. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I was a little worried because there were potatoes here, which are heavy, heavy feeders. Corn is as well, but this soil is so good. It's got such a ton of organic mat matter that's been breaking down. I mean, it's just rich. It's got tons of worms and all that in it. So I'm gonna put corn in here. So I got a bunch of corn. And I think for the garlic grill, I'm gonna go ahead and do some peanuts with an alteration of some more squashes. The kind that just stay low to the ground, don't really climb much, like the summer squash and zucchini. And I'll start those today, probably, from seed. And that way, as these ones start pit pit pittering out, I got more coming. I'm also gonna do that with the tomatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and plant more like paste tomatoes because the by the time my peppers are doing really good by the end of the season the end of the summer when it starts cooling down you get into fall that's when the peppers really start taking off but by then I don't really have any tomatoes so I'm gonna see if I can start some now and we can get some tomatoes that are doing well by the time those peppers are going so I can make some salsa I'll also be making a lot of green salsa and stuff with those tomatillos you still can't find your tool babe now, an old farmer once told me, <clears throat> you take any tools into the field, make sure you glue a sunflower seed to them. <laughs> that way you find them. That way them. <laughs> when you lose them, later on in the summer, you can start looking around for sunflowers. <laughs> I know, and I saw that tool that you were looking for yesterday, and I picked it up yep. because it was in the grass. And I don't remember what I did with it either. <sighs> I'm sure it will show up. I'll help I'm, you look I'm for sure it in a minute. I'm sure it's in a safe place where we won't lose track of it. <laughs> These guys have already per perked up since yesterday. I was thinking though, I'm worried. I kind of put them too close together, you know? The tobacco is going to get big. This is going to get big. So I'm kind of wondering if I should just do one tobacco here and one peanut. That way they have plenty of room to really fill out. Because I worry they're going to get too crowded. I'm going to need to put my hair up. It's bit sweaty out here. Settle down, chicken. Just excited she laid an egg. My daisies are starting to make little daisies. Pretty excited about that. Real pretty. Here's my little like potage herb. Got lots of different the cardinal basil and rosemary and chamomile, but it looks like it needs some water. Got some thyme over here and some stevia. A little hollyhock. More little herbs over here. This is my bolt of cilantro. I wanted to do stevia. I've heard that it is a perennial here in my area, so it should keep going, coming back. I don't think it's an evergreen, but so we'll see how it does. I'm kind of curious. All right, let me figure out what I want to do. Look. That's one of those little pink lady beetles. Aren't they pretty? Oh, there she goes. Oh, here's another one. How fun, yay! <sighs> That's, that makes me happy. I did something kind of silly. So you know this lovely arch here that Nate did for me? 
he was asking me, you know, where he should put it. And I was like, oh, anyone should work, do because all of these climb. Well, I forgot. I didn't realize that this white scalloped squash is not a climber. <laughs> but it might work out in the end because this one, this is the Tahitian melon and they get huge. And I've heard that they need a lot of room to grow and to really sprawl. So it might work out in the end. We'll see. <laughs> First little squash growing, look at that. That's awesome. Look at this guy, he's just loving this trellis. I don't know which one's this one. It's that flat head, that flat squash. Looks like a flat white pumpkin. That's cool, I'm excited about that. Now I don't know what that is. I don't know what kind of bug that is. I've seen a lot of new bugs this year. I'm gonna have to figure out what that is. This is my peach hibiscus. Isn't it so pretty? I was wanting it for a while. Oh, look, there's one of these little pink ladybugs. <laughs> They're everywhere. It's so good. I've been eyeing this one for a while and I finally bought it for myself. I was hoping it was one of the ones that could handle our weather out here, but it, it's tropical, so I'm going to have to bring it inside when it gets too cold, like below 50. But I just love it. I think it's so pretty. I love I'm just a sucker for peach. Lily's out here helping me plant some of this corn, kind of just making little nests, you know, because the top, top of it is just basically mulch with straw and pine straw. And then as they grow up, you know, we can put it back down around. We got down to the soil. Lily's seeds are quite interesting. It's a corn, it's a sweet bantam, non-GMO heirloom corn. Lily, show them. They're pretty, they're like pearly. So interesting. So yeah, that pink coating was, it says some seeds may have a pink coating on, coating on them. This is a coating to help them germinate easier. So that's why they're a little bit pink. Yeah, yours, you have to really go down there to get to the soil. Look, you can plant them even in like stuff like that. That's fine. It doesn't have to be- but now the corn is buried. There was corn in there. Okay. It's okay to spray. It looks like I missed a potato here. I might need to take potatoes down in there. So one, two, three. So just about there is fine, really. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then do two more. It's fine. Oh. I'm hot. Hot, 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 hot. Extra ones. Mm -hmm. You know what? We'll just save them because they're so pretty. We'll just save them. Put them back in the bag. We'll just kind of pour them in. There we go. Perfect. Did I just now this row over here? I'm gonna kind of do a mixture. I've got some different peppers and some tobacco and some peanuts. I got some salvia and stevia. And I'm gonna kind of mix them up. Now, generally you don't want to mix up your nightshades like the peppers and tobacco are both in the nightshade family. And then over here I've got my tomatoes, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And this is the space that I've got to work with. And we'll just kind of see how it works.
check this out. I see all of those and these and all that over there. The crimson clover is already reseeding itself. That's kind of cool. I had no idea. I thought that it would reseed itself later. Kind of fascinating. You see his little life cycle, you know? So that'll be kind of fun. We'll see how that works. I guess it will just kind of grow up with this. The sunflowers and the nasturtiums. I'll try to keep it from kind of outgrowing my nasturtiums here. I've been working on, I planted, I've kind of did an alteration. This is a, I think this is a, this is a salvia. The stevia is further down. And a pepper, and then a peanut, tobacco, and here I decided to go ahead and start just putting out some sunflowers as well. So I just got this alteration going. I have a stake for each pepper and each sunflower to try to keep Maro out of here, and they also need support. But yeah, I'm gonna mix in some sunflowers, and I, I need to go and after this transplant some of my marigolds all into their own pots along with some sunflowers that I have. I've got goodness that I need to do as well. But I want to finish this up. I'm excited. I think it's going to look good. And when those marigolds are ready to go out, Nate's working on the turkey house. When those marigolds are ready to go out, I will put these them in as well and kind of, you know, mix them in on the edges. That way we got some pretty color. <sighs> Y'all, I am done for today. I was able to transfer all my marigolds and all my sunflowers and I'm pooped and I have dirt all over me and I feel like I, I think I have some on my nose. So I'm gonna go shower real quick and probably make some pizza. Water in the garden needs it, needs some more water. Yeah, I'm excited y'all. I think it's gonna look good. And my vision is finally starting to happen. One little step at a time, y'all. We'll get there. <sighs> but for now, I'm gonna go have a bit of an evening. And we'll see you all next time.